What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the player index, but this is only for people that are doing co-op games, or games that like, you're only using one client. Because if you're doing multiplayer, you don't need to get player index, because you can then just use like player zero for everything. Um, but if you're doing the, the sort of game that I've made here, um, you would need this, so that's why I'm showing you guys how to do it, because there's a tutorial that will be included in the description that will teach you how to actually explain the players and do it properly. But basically, but basically, like, I'll show you when I start the game. Instead of spawning in, like, two different, like, inst or, like, two different, like, instances, or, yeah, I do spawn in two different instances, but, like, they, they're both running off the same client. So, if I didn't have this right here, if I didn't have player index, there'd be no way to tell, like, to tell them apart. Because player index would, like, automatically be set to zero. That's why I'm making this video so I can teach you guys how to like how to solve this because it took me forever to figure this out too. Um. So yeah. So if we go here, game mode. Then we go back here again. Like this is all in the player in like in that guy's tutorial. So we also have get player start here, which will basically get all the players and it'll put it into all player starts. So it will calculate like all player starts and we get the transform and stuff. And you'll basically, like here, I'm basically just calculating if the player start tag, which is this right here. Let's stop the game. But this right here. Where is it? Uh, Right there. As you can see, player start tag. If this is equal to the player index, it will then go through and then it'll do the rest of that. But if it's not, it won't. But yeah, so basically, I have max player count, which is set in the menu by the player. And then a minus one because index starts at zero. And then I have this index which is set here be depending on which player, like the max player count. And then... Yeah, so this index is set every time that the player, like, every time this, this loop, like, runs through. So the first time it'll be set to zero, then it'll be set to one, then it'll be set to two, then it'll be set to three. And then if this is right, so if player so if if the if the player starts zero and this index is equal to zero, it will then go through here and it will spawn the player at the position of the start. As you can see here. Which I'm getting from the player and transform there. And so once it's possessed, I then add it to an array called players. And then, yeah, and then I also have another function called index. Oh, no, oh, no. So here I'm setting the index of the of the player controller also. Just make sure that I have control of everything. Again, the guy does this in the tutorial that I'm going to put in the description. So make sure to watch that one too. But here is basically the additional part that I did. So we then set the player. So P1 is player 1, obviously. And then I created another function inside the player called... Index, where is it? Um, player index, right there. So the reason you need to create this player index is because, like for example, I think here in the ragdolls, yeah. So basically, every time you, you you get a player controller, so like in order to like disable inputs and stuff, you need to get a player controller. So and if you don't have like the player index, that will just be set to zero, and that is no good <laughs> if it's set to zero. So that's why. That's why I, I spent like six, seven hours trying to get this player index because then trying to figure out how to get it. Because while like it did work, like for example, the ragdoll worked and stuff, it was not the right way to do it. And like I definitely ran into certain problems. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the get up. St oh, actually, it was this. Yeah, this was wouldn't work anymore because it was referencing the wrong player. It was referencing player zero. So like player, like the player two or whatever wouldn't work. So that's why I went through all this effort. So yeah, so here, I basically pull out of here, then I type player index, then as you can see, I, I set the player index equal to the array index, which will then set it to 0, 1, 2, 3. And then I also set the player here on the player, um, my game instance, but I, I'm just doing that for score keeping and stuff. So if you want to keep the score and stuff. That's actually a really good way that I found of like keeping score is by using the game instance. Because the game instance will never actually like disappear. So I usually just cast it to there and then I just get it back 
in the in the game mode. Again, cast is not the best way to do it. You should really be using interfaces and stuff. But an another use of this game index was was at the projectile. When I create projectile in, well, well I create projectile in here actually. I create projectile over here. Okay, so here. So basically, yeah, I have I have a grenade spawn, which is basically just a arrow right there. So basically, the paintball will spawn right there because I I don't actually have fire out of the gun. I could have, but the way I did it, I did not use it. So basically, it will spawn at the gun location, and then and then oh yeah, so that's that's just a custom server function. That's that's in case I ever want to make this like actual multiplayer. So then, yeah, so then it spawns it at that location. And then I also have it carry the player index over to the to the player to the player projectile. And then over here, over here, I'm just setting to, over here. I'm, I'm using this player like index to change the color of the actual splat. As you can see here, um, if I just drop this down, I have red, blue, green and yellow. So depending on which index it is, it will then like set the color differently. So that basically give, gives it a splatoon effect. So basically like each each team will have a different color. And I then, so basically I just give it there, I use it here and then over in the game mode, I will then call it again here. As you can see, because actually no, I'm missing one because if we go over to here, 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 I then cast to the player index when it overlaps, and then I get the player shot reference, which is the player index, and then I pass it on to the game mode. I also pass on the amount of points that I want to add. If I click there, as you can see, there we go. And then I set get player controller or get player character. And then I cast to player character, and then set the score plus equal the current score. And then do a for each loop, again, using the switch on int. And then basically all this complicated stuff is just to minus the points. So basically if, if they're not, okay, so let's see. Player, okay, so if player index equal equal player index player one greater than zero, if that's true, and this is true, okay, so if player score is greater than zero and it's equal equal a player index, I then minus 10. So basically, I'm getting. So basically, if the player index is not equal to the player that just shot the ball, it will minus everyone else's score. So it would then give the player like a Splatoon effect again, as if, as if, as I can show you right now. If so, let's start the game. It defaults to two because that's the just the number I chose. So here we go. I go paint wars. Again, as you can see, there's a player starts there. Let me just show you. Shift one. Yeah, player start zero. And look, the player that spawned there. It's going to be player zero. Yep. And then, so we go over here. Get the gun. Shoot. As you can see, it's adding the score. Perfectly to him. Um, don't, don't ask me why, like, he, like, his entire body goes blue in there. It's, it's just like a... I don't know. It's 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 an error that could easily be fixed, but we didn't have time because this, this was actually a school project. But as you can see, as I shoot, my score goes up, and the other player's score goes down. So therefore, it gives him Splatoon effect that he's using. Um, he's using ter territory again. Like there is a better way to do the Splatoon calculation. You would have a camera up top that would like calculate everything, but that's quite complicated. And with the amount of time that we did, that we had, this is the best I could do. So yeah, that's basically it. So player index is a very important, which is why I made this video. Um, hope this helped you guys out. Again, this is just useful for people that are doing single client multiplayer. 
for everybody else, I'm pretty sure you can just use player um like player zero as your player index, and you should be fine. So yeah, like, subscribe, and share if this does help you out. If this, if like, subscribe, and share if the, if this did help you out. And this is your boy from cool. I'm reporting out.